Hi, this is Beth Outram, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can change an existing chart of accounts. There is another written portion and video on creating a chart of accounts. Both of these presentations are a part of the Smart Bridge series, JDE Finance Best Practices. In the written portion of the creating chart of accounts, I go into the design and the theory and all of that. But most of us are not lucky enough to come in and be able to design the chart of accounts from scratch. Most of us inherit a chart of accounts that has been modified over the years so that its original design may not even be recognizable. And it may not match the way that your company now does business. So let's talk about the way that I can change an existing chart of accounts so that it better suits our purposes. This is in 9.1, tools release 9.1.5. So you can see I have my breadcrumbs. And the global updates menu will be the menu that we're going to be using. You can see here we have changed business units, object accounts, subsidiaries, a whole lot of stuff, including category codes and uh, model consolidated fields, etc. What we're going to be walking through are the changed business units, change object, and change subsidiaries. And then we're going to skip on down here on this menu at least so that we pick up R09806. Now, these first three, you can use one or all. Change the information in the Chart of Accounts Master, F0901. They do not change the general ledger detail or the balance table. So no matter which of these you run first, you must always remember to do R09806 as well. So let's look at some of our setup. I have these open so we can look at them. It's pretty simple and straightforward. You put in the old business unit and you put in a new business unit. So for our example to this, Today, we're going to talk about 65000, which is the one that I've been playing with, and I'm going to change it to 65001. Now, the difference between changing the business unit and changing the object and subsidiary is that the business unit must exist in the business unit master first. I can't change an existing business unit to a business unit that doesn't exist. You just put in your values and go ahead and hit enter. Now, another nice thing about this grid is that it is importable. So if there is a whole bunch of business units that I wanna change, I can put them in an Excel spreadsheet, make sure I have them right, and then I can import them into this grid either using the import facility here or copy and paste down in the grid. So I'm not going to submit that because I've got some other things that I want to do with these sets of accounts. The next process that we would do, perhaps anyway, is a change of the object accounts. Now, here is my object account change, and you can see there's some more specifications here that you can choose to narrow your selection. So I can change an old object to a new object, and I can do it by a specific company or by a specific subsidiary. So my example this morning is going to be 65000 because I have other people in this same environment and I don't want to change their accounts. And I'm going to take old object 1105 
and I'm going to change it to 1106. Now, another gotcha on this is, like I said, the new object cannot exist. But if perchance you have chosen one that does, it will submit it, it will run, you will not get any error report. Just to show you, here is my account number 1105. And I do not have account number 116. See? So let's go back and go ahead and update our account number, our object account number, and submit it. And let's just check and see if it's already run. There is no report, so let's go check it on the screen and see if indeed it is there. And there is 1106 with the description and everything at that 1105 used to be. So let's go show you that. And if I do a find on here, I no longer have 1105. So easy peasy. It's just as simple as that. Now there is also facilities to change the subsidiary. So I'm going to narrow that again to company 65000. And I'm going to change my subsidiary BEAR to BW. Now if I was going to change my accounts at the bank, there's two different ways I could do it. If I'm totally changing banks, I highly recommend that you create a whole new account number for that bank account rather than this method. But if, for example, my Bear National was acquired by Bank of the West, this would be the preferred method of changing it so that all of my history of that account stays with the account. Okay, so again, this subsidiary cannot exist. So I'm going to show you that I have no subsidiary like this. And I do have a bare one. And you see how many there are. So again, I'm going to limit it to 65,000. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to go ahead and submit my subsidiary update. I did not narrow it. I could certainly narrow it by object as well. Although there really is only one bear in the subsidiary and it's 110. Sorry, 1110. So I'm going to submit that. Same kind of gotchas as on the object account. You're not going to have an, a, rep a report, and it will not tell you if you already have a BW out there, for example. So we're going to go ahead and refresh the screen and see our 1110 bear is gone, and our 1110BW is there. Now, in my general ledger detail, I'm going to put in my business unit, my object account, and my subsidiary, and do a find. And you'll see that these are not changed. These still exist as 1110 bear. If we look at the balances table, F0902, we will find exactly the same thing. So this is where R09806 comes into play. And it is extremely important that you remember to do this. 
through my years of experience with JDE, I can tell you that this is the most common mistake that people make when they go to change the account, chart of accounts. They go through the interactive screens and submit it, and they change it in the chart of accounts master, but they neglect to do this last step where it changes it in all of the detail and in the balances. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So I wanted to print a report this time, but I'm gonna go ahead and run it in proof so we can just see how that works. While we're waiting for that to process, I would like to remind you of one other thing. If while you're changing your chart of accounts, you have changed the position in which this appears in the chart, you must also check your levels of detail and make sure that they are still correct. In our particular example this morning, we don't have any changes to the levels of detail. We sort of change them in place, if you will, so that's not necessary for us, but it will be when you do this for real. Also, if, for example, I wanted to change 1105 to 1106, and then I had one further down in my chart that was 1117, and I wanted to change that to 1105, which used to exist, but it no longer does, that is possible, but you must plan that very carefully because you must make the first step, 1105 to 1106, which eliminates 1105, then run the update of the GL detail and the balances, then go back and change 1117 to 1105. And then again, again run R09806, to change the detail and the balances. So plan your work carefully and it should be quite successful for you. Let's go check and see if that's finished processing yet. And it has. So here's our global update report in proof. And it says this is what I'm gonna change. Ooh, other people had submitted things. So this is a very good example of why you run this in Prove. There's a bunch of stuff out here that does not belong to what I'm working on. So I'm going to go back to my R09806, and we're going to look at that again and I'm going to make a copy because I don't want to uh, change the X version or the Z version. So I'm going to make this Smart Bridge 101 and I'm going to do the title. So I'm going to look at this and see what my data selections are. And I'm going to say I only want to do company equal to 65000. So here we have our new version, and it has our data selection so that it narrows it. So let's check our processing options as well. We're cool with that. Let's go ahead and submit this and see what our report has to say. I'm just going to, I always check my data selections to make sure because I am a little OCD that way. I want to report, I still want to run it in proof so I can check and make sure that everything is correct and submit it. So let's go back to our submitted jobs. 
and I bet you it runs quicker this time. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Another good indication that you might have something you didn't want. There's my report, and that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and run this in final. So let's go back to our report and run this. Submit and say final. And we'll go and look at our report again. And it is done. And we could look at the report, but basically I'm just going to go in here and look at our account numbers. And if I were to look at the account ledger, I could show you that. But I also want to show you how in my detail I no longer have 1110BEAR. It has changed them all to BW. Still the same short account ID, which is the very important piece of changing the chart of accounts. This short account ID, which a lot of people don't even know it exists, particularly users, and they don't need to, except if they're going to start doing something like this. And then this little guy, short account ID, is going to be very, very important. Short account ID is what's stored in a lot of the supporting subledger information that feeds into the general ledger. This is the reason that we can change our chart of accounts with impunity because the short account ID will now link up with the new account number. So 00307416 used to be 1110BEAR. All our detail has been changed. And here it again is again, 00307416. But if, and this is our balance table, we look, we don't have that. But we do have our new account. And there's our balances. So this is extremely helpful. Even if you were to take on a major project where you made massive changes to your chart of accounts, you still can use your short account ID to help direct that. So if I'm going to do a massive change with a universal batch engine that I've written for custom changing of the chart of accounts, what I would do is I would have a little table set up that says, this is my old account number, this is my short account ID, this is my new account number, and I would write that to change the chart of accounts, and then I could go and use this standard functionality within JDE to update the detail and to update the balances. So I hope this helps you look into potentially changing your chart of accounts to work the way you want it to if, for example, it is not. If your financial statements are impossible to get or take forever to get or someone has to do manual intervention before they can be published, you may want to consider changing your chart of accounts and JDE will help you do that. So stay tuned for some more helpful hints from SmartBridge in the series JDE Financial Best Practices.